your Bible, I'm just going to have you turn to one scripture tonight. John chapter 15, verse 15. This is our theme verse for this month. We're starting a new series called I Am a Friend of God. Say that after me. I am a friend of God. Now, some of you may not believe that right now. Some of you may not even feel like that it even makes sense or it's even possible to be God's friend. And that's why we are in this series, because God wants to be your friend. And like, who says no to him? Many believers do. Many believers keep their relationship with him at a very shallow level. Do y'all know what that means? Like you have people in your life, but it's very shallow. Like it's not deep. You don't talk about, like I've talked to some of you guys before. Well, did you, no, we don't talk about things like that, right? You just keep it surface. Well, a lot of believers keep God at the surface, which surface, which makes no sense because he sees all things. Everything is naked and open before him in the sense that he knows you inside and out. You're not keeping anything from him. He sees all and he knows all. And I also know that today is Isaiah's birthday. So happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. You look amazing in your Christmas sweater and somebody's going to get you something from the cafe that you like after. Okay. Just make sure we don't forget that. Okay. And we're not going to sing to you. You know why? Because these children need Jesus and we just need to focus on the word right now. And so we will get you a cupcake later. Okay. So here's the thing. He sees all, he knows all. So John 15, 15, look at what he said to his disciples. And he's saying the same thing to us today. No longer do I call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all the things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. God has no secrets, none. The things that you don't know about your future, it's not because he doesn't want you to know them. Have you ever been in a group of friends and they're, and they're like, they're talking and then you all walk up and they're like, mm. they don't say anything. And like, what are y'all talking about? Nothing, nothing. And it's like, okay, I didn't want to know anyways, whatever. You know what I mean? God doesn't do you like that. God does not do you like that. Have, has anybody ever had somebody try to throw them a surprise party and you found out about it? Has that ever happened to anybody? Super awkward. So a so bunch of people, you know, playing this party for me. A couple of people in here might remember this. And like, so the, the lady that worked for Pastor Jean and Kathy at the time, my coworker, she tells me about the party. Like we're leaving work. This is way back, old, like eight, 10 days. And so everybody's at my parents' house. Pastor Greg had picked me up and he's going through this whole thing. Like, I don't know about it. And I'm like, I totally know about this party. Like, this is so weird. And so I'm sitting in the car to, and I'm supposed to go in and everyone say surprise. And finally I just turned to Greg and I'm like, Hey, so-and-so already told me about this. And he was like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, like, this is awkward. Like, what do I do? And he was like, well, get out of the car. I was like, no, I don't, you know, like I was just like, so like awkward right? It's awkward about surprises that you're, that surprises that aren't surprises. Guys, your future has been held in reserve for you, right? But if you don't have relationship with him now, you're not going to have the confidence to hear from him later. You, 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 you've got to realize that real friendship with others starts with relationship with God. So like how your relationship with God is, is going to determine how your relationship with people is. So that's why in December, we're going to talk about being a friend of God. And then in January, we're going to apply how to be a friend everywhere else. Does that make sense? Now, again, you're going to have to choose like, just like everything else that you hear preached from this stage or any platform in this church, it's up to you to decide if you're going to choose life or you're going to choose death. The, the plan has already been extended. You can be his friend. You're going to get one of these cards when you leave tonight. And this is what it says. We'll put this statement on the screen. I'm a friend of God. Therefore, I'm not left out. That's a real feeling, right? But when you understand that he wants you, then you can navigate that with success. You can navigate that with, nobody likes me. You know what I mean? Because the reality is, let me just tell you something that may just like blow your mind tonight. Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody is not going to accept you. Everybody is not going to want to be your friend. But if you know that he wants you, that should be enough. Now, for many people, it's not. And they spend their whole life in insecurity. If you think I'm going to let some little boy have my number that's like 15, that changes his mind as much as he changes his hairstyle or his underwear, you're crazy. I'm not going to give my heart away like that. Right? Because I know that I belong to him. Right? That's why I said, when you understand what friendship with God actually looks like, it will help you navigate every other relationship. 
including the times where you feel like left out, when you feel ignored. Y'all, I know what that feels like. When all my friends had boyfriends, it was like I was ghosted for two months until they broke up. Right? What are you going to do? Cry about it? I did. It doesn't do any good. Compromise? That's going to take you in a wrong direction. Or are you just going to like man up and say, okay, like they, they are ignoring me right now, but I have him. You know what I mean? I'm a friend of God, therefore I'm not left out, ignored, unwanted, or unloved. I rest my soul. I confidently ask, and I know how to ask. I want you to take a look at this clip from a really famous Christmas movie to help us start to unpack this tonight. Family shook. Just stay up there. I don't want to see you again for the rest of the night. I don't want to see you again for the rest of my whole life. And I don't want to see anybody else either. I hope you don't mean that. You'd feel pretty sad if you woke up tomorrow morning and you didn't have a family. No, I wouldn't. Then say it again. Maybe it'll happen. I hope I never see any jerks again. It's funny, but it's real, right? It's kind of an exploitation of sometimes how we've all felt either in family or in a social group. I want you to listen to this verse, write down the reference. It'll be on the screen. Psalms 2710. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Guys, friendship with him is a guarantee. The reality is we don't have guarantees in our family, You don't get to pick your family. And sometimes families, even though it's not a nice thing to say, they do suck. I didn't grow up in a family that sucked, but Pastor Kathy did. Her her mom didn't like her and neither did her sister. She grew up with acute rejection. I didn't grow up that way. But you can see in the life of Pastor Kathy that even when mother and father forsake you, even when your family goes through hard times or bad times or it's just they never get good, you're not alone. He sent his only son to die for you. And he doesn't want to just die for you and be like at a distance. He will never leave you alone. And that has to be real to you. And this next week, as we continue to build into this series, I want you to find yourself looking at this card. You can screenshot it because literally, like if you act wrong, it's all tied to seeing your relationship with him wrong. If you're some girl that's running around looking for love and looking for attention, you obviously don't know that you have his. Because if you knew that you had his, then you would be full of that and you would recognize it ain't the season. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. See, you need to put your eyes on these scriptures. When you're feeling like, and, and honestly, if you'll stay off of social media, you won't have to deal with a lot of this stuff. However, like many of you probably heard about the shooting that happened in Detroit, Michigan, and some more details came out about that today. And so this guy had already been pulled into the office. He was causing trouble, which we'll look at in a second. Um, You know, but he was being bullied, which I don't know the extent of that. Y'all, I don't do the research. I don't do the research. I research the scriptures. But if it's like the news, I can't, I cannot tolerate that. I cannot tolerate that. So Pastor Faye told me he was pulled into the office, his parents, like at 10 a.m. And like two hours later is when he shot and killed four people. Seven are injured. He will be tried as a terror. It was, it's considered an act of terror. He will be tried as an adult. He was bullied. He had written in a journal that he had plans to do this. And so he did. I hate that. Like, I hate that. I hate that people bully people. I hate that. And if you do that, you need to stop. Like this needs to be your like line in the sand where you decide I'm not because all that is is insecurity. It is. It's just insecurity to exploit other people for whatever differences they may have. Name calling all of that. That's so immature. Like get out of here. Go back to the nursery. Let them spank you or whatever they do. Time out. Be not. No, I don't do that. I'm not in. I'm not in that business having to put people in time out, pull people aside. Why are you calling this? Why are you acting like, no, what, what are we for? 
That is not okay. However, because I cannot be in the lives of every young person that you have relationship with, I cannot protect you from bullies. But he can. Meaning when you know what he thinks about you, you have to decide to prioritize. You know what that means? Like there were certain things today that you did not do. You know why? Because you didn't want to do them. There are certain things that you have to decide not to think about. You can't meditate on and think about people that don't like you, people that have made fun of you, people that have said hurtful things about you, people who have misinterpreted you or judged you or whatever. You have to instead focus on what God says about you. Well, they're still in my life. Listen, my mom's sister was in her life for a long time, and it was a constant thing. She constantly put my mom down, constantly. It wasn't like my mom got to be 18, moved out, got married. She did all of that. It's like she couldn't get rid of her. Her sister did that for decades, treated her like that for decades. Do you know what? My mom had a decision to make. I'm either going to allow what she says to define me. I'm either going to allow what my mom says about me to define me, or I'm going to hang on to the word of God. And I watched my mom hang on to the word of God. And if the word of God can help one person, it can help any person, right? But you just, you just focus on that. Y'all, I had horrible things that were said about me, horrible names all through middle school. Like I was not like popular. I was not like accepted. And I don't want you to feel sorry for me. And like, we love PC. I don't want any of that because I'm not insecure. And I wasn't insecure back then. And the reality is I probably had every reason to be, you know, when you have teeth coming out of like everywhere, it's like, just homeschool until the braces do their job. Honestly, I'm just saying, like, if you want to not have these issues, you know, you got glasses, there's just a lot. The redhead thing has its whole, has a whole marketing campaign for bullying. Okay. Y'all call it ginger now and it's all cute. No, there was no ginger back then. Okay. There were all these other, I get it. I get it. But the reality is it was like, I was walking around with a little postcard of this. And I just decided that's going to be enough. I just decided that's going to be enough. And when, you know, the most, like, what is it like? It's so stereotypical, but it's so true. It's like, you know, the little little cheerleader and the little football captain, whatever. You just make fun of you because you're not doing what they're doing or whatever. And then you go back 10 years later to your 10-year reunion, and you have an amazing husband who only has eyes for you, you know, and you're happily married you know, and she's like got her head in the toilet because she's drunk. And the party just started, y'all. Do you know what I mean? Because she's already been divorced and we're only 10 years graduated. But she was the most beautiful. She was the most popular. And I don't tell that story to exploit that situation, but just to say, if you will do things God's way, If you will just do things God's way, there will be a reward for you. And haters are going to hate. Some people, literally, like, it's just mean. It is mean. It's mean. It's mean to bully. It's mean to put your mouth on the struggles or the problems of other people. That's not, that's not, that's not cool. Whoever said that that was cool? So, Isaiah 41, 13, I'm holding you by your right hand. I, the Lord, your God, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Psalm 62, one and two, truly my soul silently waits for God. See, when you have real relationship with God, you will know how to be in public. Some of you, it's like, "Mm, you don't need to be in public because you don't have enough one-on-one time with the Lord. So you don't act right. You're charismatic. You act one way to the pastors and another way with your friends. You act one way with these friends and a different way with these friends. What's all, that's a restless soul, a mind, a will, and emotions that are divided. You're putting on all these different hats. Why? Because you don't really have authentic relationship and friendship with him. Because when you have authentic relationship and friendship with him, he makes you the best version of yourself. He makes you the best version of yourself. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, when you spend time reading his word, when you spend time listening to his word, when you spend time thinking about his word, speaking his word, he makes you the best version of yourself that you're supposed to be. But when you don't spend alone time with him, when you don't really cultivate that friendship, 
all your other friendships suffer for it because they're filtered through your insecurities. They're filtered through your emotions. They're filtered through, you know, literally, why is, what was his name? Kevin, why does Kevin act like this? I mean, I personally feel like he was mistreated in the family. And this is why like mom life is not for me because when he's like getting in trouble, I want, like, why are they all looking at him like that? Do you, I mean, I'm mad at the whole family. Like I want to put y'all in the basement or in the attic or wherever, like we need to be kind. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, this is complicated, like whatever, but I'm just saying he's acting out. Why? Because he doesn't feel right. But guys, you can't use that as an excuse because when you'll be with him, he'll help you sort out all those hurts. He'll help you sort out all those words that were spoken over you. He'll help you sort through the fact that you don't feel confident or, or you're si- sometimes you're sizing yourself up to other people and they don't even know it. You're comparing yourself with someone else and they're not comparing themselves to you. You're doing that. He will help you sort that out. He will help you realize and discover who you really are. But if you don't do that, then your soul is restless. Your emotions are out of whack. You're on a spiritual roller coaster. You go from high highs, like I'm going to go all for God, and then to really low lows. And you're hiding, you're lying, you're disobeying, all this stuff. Why? Because you haven't established, like literally, you're going to have this. Keep it with you. Take a picture. I mean, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures, y'all. Like if it's not working out for you, that's on you. So you got to get aggressive with yourself. I know what that looks like. I've got some aggressive things going on in my own life right now where I'm saying, listen, enough is enough. Me and Pastor Greg, we've been eating for a couple days now. You know what I mean? Because you, you just got to decide. Like I can pray over you. I can minister the word to you. I can sit down with you. We can have appointments. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to make this real for you. And nobody can do that for you but you. And you have to literally get aggressive and say, okay, I'm a friend of God. Therefore, I'm not left out. You know, you just, mm. who wants to be a friend with somebody who's like this anyways? Well, I just don't know how to be a friend. You treat people the way you would want to be treated. If nobody's talking to you, go talk to them. That's a victim to wait for somebody to come and address you. You go to them. Well, I don't know what to say. What would you want somebody to say to you? You just start there. If you want a friend, you show yourself friendly and you pick the people that you want to be friends to. Well, they're not friends back to me. I have a lot of people that I am friends to them and they're not friends back to me. They don't remember my birthday. They don't remember my anniversary. They don't give me anything. They're basically selfish, but I choose to love them in spite of them, right? I choose that. I choose to be their friend if they never friend me back. And you're just all in your feels about your, listen, y'all people aren't perfect. Are you perfect? Are you the perfect friend? So why do you expect for people to be the perfect friend to you when you've never been a perfect friend? Why do you expect people to never talk about you? Well, I just can't believe she acted like that to me. And I'm, you know, I'm just not, why do you expect people to forgive you when you don't forgive other people? You haven't been a perfect friend. We're all growing. People aren't perfect. But you can't act like that. You can't live in isolation. I wrote it this way. It'll be on the screen. Practicing isolation is in direct violation to authentic Christianity. You can't be a successful Christian if you choose to stay isolated. And let me tell you something so beautifully. Hear the sound of my voice. There is no excuse. There is no excuse for isolation. Unless you are like, on an island by yourself and there's literally no other human being and you're not. So there's no excuse. There's no excuse. My truly, my soul silently waits for God from him comes my salvation. He's my only rock in my salvation. Take a look at this next video. He wants to have a house full of kids. Oh, honey. I can't wait to be home. Pretty neat surprise, huh? Uh, I am speechless, and your father is probably overwhelmed. Great. I love you, Mommy. Oh, I love you too, honey. Safe flight. Okay, I'll see you. (laughs) Y'all, the thing about this girl is that she had such a relationship with her parents. Like, the thought didn't even cross her mind. Hey, did you guys make other plans? And if you haven't seen the movie, I don't have time for that. You got to watch it yourself. 
she just confidently put in her request. These guys are totally inconvenienced. They're scrambling. It's a total nightmare. Okay, until this one really happy part, I cry every time. But the reality is, when you know you're a friend of God, you confidently ask. If you don't confidently ask, then you're going to live your life trying to make all your dreams come true on your own. I'd like to introduce you tonight to some 25-year-olds that took that path, but they're not here. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't actually go to church anymore. <laughs> I don't know where they... Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you're either going to decide right now as a 12-year-old, you know what? I'm going to be a friend of God. I'm going to take him at his word. I don't care if everybody makes fun of me. I, you know, if I were someone else, I might make fun of myself, too. Listen, I made fun of myself, too, when I was y'all's age. Like, I was like, listen, your joke's good, bro, because I said that to myself this morning. I had to wake up looking like this. You know what I mean? Um, I mean there was a, one guy who was like, he was uglier than me. And I'm like, oh, what? You're, why are you judging me? Like, you look just as ugly as I do. Like, like if the nice people, good-looking people make fun of you, it's like, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. What I'm saying is, when you know that you are a friend of God, you confidently ask him, and guess what? He answers every time. Every single time. Look at these verses. Write them down. John 14, 13 through 14. Whatever you ask, say whatever you ask. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, everyone say anything, according to his will, he hears us. So there's benefits for being a friend of God. There's benefits. He loves you. He will never leave you alone. He will restore and mend and fix every broken place in your heart. And you can confidently go to him and don't, guys, you, that's why we ask you in small groups, what was your biggest ask and were you rejected? Because you got to get past that because your father will not reject you. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above anything that you could ever ask, think, dream, or imagine. So there's no such thing as too big of an ask. There may be too big of an ask for your parents. There may be too big of an ask for your grandparents. But there's not too big of an ask for him. So you have to develop a friendship with him in such a way that you have confidence. That daughter, total confidence. Why? She's a good kid. She's doing the right thing. You know, whatever the storyline indicates. Look at this last clip. They're all good kids. But some of them are scared. And some of them don't feel listened to. Some of them have some pretty tough breaks, too. But every kid deserves a present on Christmas. Because he is my friend, I know how to act. Guys, I don't know. Again, I didn't do the research. I could have Pastor Faith do the research. But the thought did cross my mind. Like, I wonder if that teenager in Detroit, like, I wonder if he had a youth family. I wonder if he had a youth group. I wonder if he had somebody that was building him up, that cared about him, that loved him. Because all of you guys that are in this room have access to that. Now, you still have to take advantage of it. And honestly, if you come in newer to Choose Life, like in the last several years, and you haven't grown up here, I get that that's going to be a challenge. Because I've had people say before, it's just clicky, like clicky. Okay, well, some of these kids have been friends their whole life. So give them a little bit of grace for the fact that they've known each other for a long time. And maybe they're not intentionally leaving you out. They just didn't think about it. But I'm charging all of you to think about it. Because I guarantee you, you never make right, you never make, excuse me, wrong decisions when you feel right about yourself. But when you feel wrong about yourself, you act wrong. And it's very important that the basis for your confidence is your relationship with him and not your own performance, right? I know so many students who made mistakes and it was like, well, I've already given it up. Like, you know, what's the point now? There's a big point. Just because you made one wrong turn doesn't mean you keep making wrong turns and they just give up, right? No, you go back. You confess your sins. He's faithful and just. Well, my mom keeps telling me I'm a liar. Well, you've been lying a lot. But what your mom says about you is not your problem. 
Your relationship with God is your problem. Because he can turn that around. And you can tell your mom, mom, you're right. I have been such a liar. I've been a so non-authentic version of myself. And I'm going to stop. Because I'm going to change my priorities. And I'm going to actually have an... Do you understand what I'm saying? You act consistently with the way that you think. And if you don't spend time with him, you're going to think wrong. And depending on your circumstances, you may have a lot of wrong thoughts. Like that kid who was bullied that killed four people and injured seven others. John 13, Jesus said, Now before the feast of the Passover, having known that he had come the time to depart from this world and go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them until the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he rose from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself, and after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wash them with the towel with which he was girded. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Because Jesus knew who he was, and he knew he be, who he belonged to, he knew how to act. And how did, that, how did that end up? He made himself a servant. He positioned himself. Guys, people say wrong things. People do wrong things. People are crappy friends. You've been a crappy friend. But when you are a friend of him, there can be stability in your soul that's not tied to how other people treat you. It's not tied tied to how your mom treats you. It's not tied to how your dad treats you or didn't treat you or who's in the picture or who's... Listen, when he's in the picture, have you ever seen people that cut other people out of the picture? Right? Because like, I don't care about all those other people that are in that, like all those, like it was me and Greg and like a whole bunch of other friends. I don't even know those people anymore. Who cares about them? I'm just going to cut out me and Greg. Do you know what I'm saying? You can't do that literally in your life, but in your heart. There's a strength and a security that's tied to your relationship with him. And you're not all beat up and messed up because of the choices and the attitudes of other people. Listen, if you've had a parent reject you, that wasn't your fault. That was their fault. That wasn't on you. That was on them. And the enemy will try to shame you and he'll try to blame you. Like now all of a sudden you're responsible for people getting divorces. Now all of a sudden you're responsible for them being alcoholics. Now all of a sudden you're responsible for their, their bad choices. No, you're not responsible for anybody's choices but yours. You're not responsible for, do you know that even how other people think about you is none of your business? My thoughts don't belong in someone else's head. Gross. I don't want to be in someone else's head. If they put me there, that's fine, but I could care less. I want, I want my thoughts to be tied to his thoughts. You know why? Because his thoughts are right and theirs aren't. Well, it's somebody that's, you know, really close to me. I don't care how, they're not closer. They're not as close as your next breath. They're not inside you. There is no opinion that matters more than his. Y'all, he is literally this close to you. Last video, close your Bible, but take a look at the screens. It's Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your presence. I thank you, Father, that you are that close and it is that effortless to have relationship with you because you know us inside and out. You see us from the beginning all the way to the end. God, you can be trusted with our lives. So I pray right now by your spirit that you quicken this word to every hungry heart and they find themselves more committed and more focused on friendship and relationship with you than they've ever been in any other season of their life. I want you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And if you're here tonight and you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's where friendship with him begins. And I need you to lift your hand so that I can see it, so that I can lead you in a prayer, so that you can make Jesus the Lord of your life and confidently know when you take your last breath here that you're going straight to heaven because there is a heaven and there is a hell and God did not design you or your life or your eternal destiny to be in hell. So if you're here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you're not sure, could you just lift your hand so that I could see it? I want to lead you in a prayer, but it's important that you acknowledge him. The word of God says, when you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my father. I'm going to pray this prayer if you're watching us online or on, on demand at another time. This is how you make Jesus the Lord of your life. Say, Heavenly Father, right now, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth 
that Jesus is Lord. I believe all the sin of the world was laid on him so that I could be right. He was broken in every way so that I could be whole. Right now, I exchange my life for his. Jesus, come into my life. Make me brand new. And from this day forward, I'll do all I can to serve you. Father, I thank you right now for these prayer requests that have come in this week. I plead the blood of Jesus over these lives. I thank you that you know the circumstances and the situations inside and out. And so I just believe for peace, for wisdom, for instruction, for comfort in these circumstances so that the the needs of these requests are honored and they are met because when we ask in your name, your word promises that you will do it. Father, I thank you for this food tonight. I thank you for the fun that we have together in you and with each other. And we just commit God. God, to acknowledge you in all of our ways as the faithful friend who sticks closer than a brother. In Jesus' name, amen. So look up at me. We're going to give you some instructions concerning this party, but I just want you to know, these are my final thoughts tonight. We'll build more into this next week. If you are really his friend, like they're going to know. You can tell. And if you're not, they're also going to know. So if it's not been as tight as it needs to be, You can change that tonight, okay? I love you guys. Have fun.